So let me shift then and, and describe for you some of the clinical trials that we've done. Uh, we, we really approach these with the conviction that randomized trials were the right way to study these therapies. And the things that I've done have been almost entirely with Dan Cherkin and Karen Sherman, uh, who are my colleagues at Group Health in Seattle. And uh, Dan and Karen really deserve a uh, lion's share of the credit for these studies. They've really conceived and executed these and really uh, very adroitly used the group health population as a, as a clinical laboratory for studying these kinds of questions. So what I'll talk about are all randomized trials that we've done of chiropractic and acupuncture and massage for patients with low back pain. And let me start with uh, a clinical trial of chiropractic care that we did uh, many years ago uh, where we enrolled patients mostly with acute low back pain. So these are patients, uh, more than 300 patients, who were still having pain at least seven days after they'd seen a primary care physician for back pain. Uh, but most of them had had pain for less than six weeks. So, so generally acute pain. And these patients uh, did not have sciatica. We excluded patients with sciatica from this trial. And we randomized these patients to one of three arms. One was uh, chiropractic care that was delivered by one of three chiropractors who took part in the trial. The second arm was physical therapy delivered by the McKenzie method, which is a, a particular school of uh, physical therapy that's uh, advocated by uh, Robin McKenzie, who's in New Zealand. And in fact, we had trainers from the McKenzie Institute come to train our physical therapists at Group Health so that we, we knew that we were really doing the McKenzie, as it were, uh, in the proper way. And, and each of those groups got up to nine visits with the, uh, the chiropractor or the physical therapist as part of the research trial. The third group was really usual care. Uh, that is, uh, whatever the primary care physician ordered, uh, often that included non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, that sort of thing. We, we offered those patients a booklet that was an educational booklet, just sort of as a booby prize, really, uh, to give them a sense that there was, they got something out of participating in the trial. But we actually had shown in another study that this booklet had essentially no effect on patient behavior or patient outcomes, and so we affectionately referred to it as the placebo booklet. Um, in reality, that usual care group was, was essentially a no-care group because only 18% of that group actually went back to get any further care from their primary care physician after they'd enrolled in the study. We followed these patients up to two years, and uh, we had 90% follow-up at every time point. So, so we've been very successful at getting high rates of follow-up in these clinical trials at group health. Let me briefly describe the outcome measures that the primary outcome measures that we've used in all of the trials that I'll describe to you are these two. Uh, one is pain severity and one is a physical functioning scale. So we, we've been fond of this question about pain severity that asks in terms of bothersomeness. Uh, and, and we really ask how bothersome is your back pain. <clears throat> the reason we've done that is because there are some patients who will say, my pain is pretty mild, but it bothers me a lot. Uh, and others who will say, well, my back pain's fairly bad, but it doesn't bother me so much. So we kind of wanted to get it, if you will, the, the affective response to the pain. So we had this 0 to 10 scale uh, ra ranging from not at all bothersome to extremely bothersome. And then we ha used this Roland and Morris disability scale that, that probably is familiar to many here. Uh, it's basically a 24-item questionnaire that ask patients to simply endorse or not uh, 24 uh, items of physical functioning. And these are just some example items here. I walk more slowly than usual because of my back. I'm not doing jobs around the house. I get dressed more slowly. I try not to bend or kneel down uh, because of my back pain. So those are uh, examples of the kinds of uh, functions that, that the Roland scale asks about. Uh, and to make a long story short, in this trial of, of chiropractic care, uh, here's what we found uh, graphically. This is the, the pain severity or bothersomeness score on the y-axis and weeks of follow-up on the x-axis. And what you see here is that all three groups improved uh, at the four-week follow-up time, but the usual care group had the least improvement. Uh, and the chiropractic and the physical therapy arms had virtually identical levels of improvement 
This p-value here at four weeks is between the physical therapy and chiropractic groups and the usual care group. In fact, there were no significant differences between physical therapy and chiropractic at any point through this trial. And in fact, you see the two lines for those two treatments really parallel each other right out to two years. And the usual care group uh, gradually improves, and there's some convergence of the results out here by two years. Um, and there's no longer a statistically significant difference in the long run. If we looked at the Roland and Morris disability scale, a uh, similar kind of thing. You see the physical therapy arm bounce around a little here at uh, the one-year follow-up. <clears throat> but basically, <clears throat> all three groups improve somewhat from the time of enrollment. The usual care group improved the least. The chiropractic and the physical therapy arms were virtually identical through most of the uh, follow-up period. So uh, our conclusions were that, that there really was no outcome difference between chiropractic and physical therapy. They both were marginally different or marginally better than usual care and, and the differences there were really quite small. They were actually less than what most people would regard as a clinically important difference. Patients were more satisfied with their chiropractic and physical therapy care, uh, although I, I would remind you that most of the people in the usual care group actually didn't get any additional care uh, after entering the trial. The costs, as best we could estimate them within the group health system, were virtually the same for chiropractic and acupuncture. And interestingly enough, in terms of the two-year follow-up, we saw no difference in the likelihood of recurrent back pain or their subsequent utilization of medical services. So my conclusion was that, that the chiropractic care is probably not better, but probably not worse than the usual care that patients got, uh, which might include physical therapy, uh, but is differently effective in some way. It probably is effective for different patients and, and certainly by a different mechanism, um, but, but uh, perhaps uh, very similar, in fact, to conventional medical care. So what do, what do other systematic reviews have to say about chiropractic uh, manipulation? Uh, this is just one uh, review, for, well, a pair of reviews on acute back pain and chronic back pain from the Cochrane collaboration. And what you see here is that there are over 20 randomized trials, uh, both for acute and chronic back pain, uh, a handful of which have a fairly low risk of bias. And the conclusions here were that there's uh, no difference compared to other treatments. Again, other treatments, not no treatment. Um, and unclear for acute back pain whether that exceeds sham therapy. For chronic pain, uh, they concluded there's a small uh, but perhaps not clinically relevant short-term effect on pain and function compared to other treatments. And for both acute and chronic back pain, um, they, they really pointed out that there's very little in any of these trials about quality of life, return to work, or costs of care. Happily, None of these randomized trials supported any or reported any uh, important side effects or complications of therapy. And, and that, of course, is the other important side of the coin. Uh, the concern about spinal manipulation in the lumbar spine is primarily for the occurrence of cauda equina syndrome, which might occur if you had a massive disc herniation and manipulation somehow caused that to uh, worsen and uh, cause nerve root. Uh, compression of the entire uh, bundle of nerve roots in the lumbar spine. Uh, happily, that's very rare. Uh, there were no such cases reported in any of these randomized trials. But of course, randomized trials are probably not the best way to, under to estimate rates of rare complications. So looking at other observational studies, uh, some RAND investigators came up with an estimate of maybe one in a hundred million manipulations that would result in serious complications, so pretty darn safe. And in fact, as I look at numbers like this, I, I only wish that the prescriptions I write uh, for non-steroidals and opioids and muscle relaxants were as safe as this.